Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing an important topic, non-rebreather mask, NRBM. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What are non-rebreather masks? A non-rebreather mask is a type of mask which is used to deliver a higher concentration of oxygen to a patient. When is it needed? It is needed in emergency conditions where patient needs an immediate oxygen therapy such as in case of respiratory distress or hypoxia. Non-rebreather mask is different from the other standard masks because it helps to receive a higher concentration of oxygen when compared with the normal standard masks. Now, what are the indications for using non-rebreather mask? First comes severe hypoxia, as explained before. Next is respiratory distress. In patients who have severe respiratory distress and they are in need of immediate oxygen therapy, non-rebreather mask is used. Next indication is trauma. Patients who have underwent a severe trauma, for example, chest injury or head injury, may require immediate oxygen therapy and non rebreather masks are used in order to ensure that they receive sufficient oxygen to maintain their vital organ functions. Next indication is carbon monoxide poisoning. What happens in carbon monoxide poisoning is, when a patient is exposed to carbon monoxide, it binds to the hemoglobin and reduces the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood, and thereby patient requires a breathing support in order to maintain sufficient oxygen, which is achieved by non-rebreather masks. Next indication is anesthesia. When patient is in anesthesia, it is a prime responsibility to ensure that oxygen is delivered sufficiently to the patient when they are sedated or unconscious, and this is achieved by non-rebreather masks. Next, let's discuss about parts of non-rebreather masks. They include the mask, reservoir bag, one-way valve mask in the reservoir bag, two one-way valves in the mask, oxygen supply tubing, adjustable nose clip, elastic strap. First comes the mask. The mask is generally made of a soft, pliable plastic material which fits over the patient's nose and mouth. If you have a look at the picture, you can have a clear understanding of how the mask looks. Generally, it looks like a normal oxygen mask. Next comes the reservoir bag. The reservoir bag is attached to the mask and that is filled with pure oxygen which is supplied from the oxygen source. Next comes one-way valve mask. This is also called the inspiratory valve. The one-way valve is situated between the mask and the reservoir bag. Let's see how this valve works. What happens is, during inhalation, the valve opens to allow the flow of pure oxygen from the reservoir bag to the mask. During exhalation, what happens is, the valve closes to prevent the exhaled air from being inhaled again. To make a clear understanding, I'm repeating this. During inhalation, the valve opens to, and there will be the movement of oxygen-rich air from the reservoir bag to the mask. And during exhalation, the inspiratory valve closes to prevent the exhaled air from being inhaled again. Hope you all have understood the importance of the one-way valve mask. Next is two one-way valves in the mask. The mask has two one-way valves also called as expiratory valves and these valves are present in one on each side of the mask. The main function of the two one-way valves in the mask is to prevent room air from being inhaled by the patient. In simple terms, expiratory valve opens during exhalation, allowing the exhaled air to escape from the mask and closed during inhalation, thereby it prevents the patient from rebreathing the exhaled air. 
Next is oxygen supply tubing. This connects the non-rebreather mask to an oxygen source that is oxygen cylinder or valve outlet. Next is the adjustable nose clip. This helps to secure the mask to the patient's face. And the last is the elastic strap. This elastic strap helps to tighten the mask in order to prevent air leaks, perspiration and expiration. And this maximizes the concentration of oxygen being delivered to the patient. Next comes oxygen chloride and FiO2 that is fraction of inspired oxygen. Non-rebreather mask can deliver a fraction of inspired oxygen up to 90% when operated at a flow rate of 10 to 15 liters per minute. This fraction of inspired oxygen which is delivered by non-rebreather mask depends upon several factors like oxygen flow rate, the size of the reservoir bag, the tightness of the mask fit, and the patient's breathing pattern. When the flow rate is higher, it ensures that the reservoir bag remains inflated during both inspiration and expiration, and this maximizes the concentration of oxygen being delivered to the patient. Next comes the procedure how to apply non-rebreather mask to the patient. First and foremost thing is identifying the patient and explaining the procedure to the patient. Next step is wash hands thoroughly. Next is assemble the non-rebreather mask by attaching it to an oxygen source such as an oxygen cylinder or wall outlet. Make sure that the reservoir bag is fully inflated before placing the mask on the patient's face. Place the mask over the patient's nose and mouth and adjust the nose clip to ensure that it fits correctly. Connect the elastic head strap to secure the mask in place. Turn on the oxygen flow rate according to the prescription, typically 10 to 15 liters per minute. Monitor the patient's vital signs, including oxygen saturation. Frequently check the reservoir bag to ensure it remains inflated throughout the respiratory cycle. Document the time of initiation of oxygen therapy. Now, let's discuss some advantages of non-rebreather mask. As we discussed before, non-rebreather mask especially delivers a higher concentration of oxygen when compared with the standard masks. It may deliver up to 90% of oxygen which is higher than the other oxygen delivery methods. And obviously, it is a non-invasive method of administering oxygen. And it is a very easy and simplest method to deliver oxygen. It is also very clear that non-rebreather masks are portable and it is especially used in patients who need oxygen therapy and who are in move or in travel. It is also a cost-effective method of oxygen delivery. Non-rebreather mask is relatively inexpensive compared to the other oxygen delivery methods, making it a cost-effective option for oxygen delivery. Next comes some of the disadvantages of non-rebreather masks. First comes risk of carbon dioxide retention. In case if non-rebreather mask doesn't fit properly or if the patient's respiratory rate is slow, there are chances that the carbon dioxide get retained. Next comes risk of oxygen toxicity. Non-rebreather masks are generally recommended for a shorter period. If it is used for extended period of time, then there is risk of higher concentration of oxygen getting delivered to the patient, thereby increasing the risk of oxygen toxicity. Non-rebreather mask can pose risk of aspiration. Next is, non-rebreather mask may sometimes make it uncomfortable for conscious patients who may feel difficult to eat, drink, and sometimes communicate while wearing non-rebreather mask for a longer period of time. Next is, with non-rebreather mask, there is a limited mobility. 
non rebreather masks need a constant supply of oxygen which may limit patient's mobility and this creates issues with some patients so here you go with non rebreather mask if you find this video useful please like it share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications thanks for watching and have a nice day